Um, <laughs> I have the giggles right now. Prove it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I believe you. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Cancelled Podcast. Woohoo! I feel like at home right now, this is good. We haven't done an episode, just us two talking shit in a minute. Mm-mm. And... Mm. Trevor was there for what was supposed to be us two talking shit. It actually made it better, though. I think. It did. People loved the Trevor episode. I want to keep... said they would love to have him as a reoccurring guest. I want to keep having him. I, too, would like him to reoccur. Yeah, so what's up with that? <laughs> Nothing. But the, everyone online is like, Brooke, go on another date with him. I think you And have for the to. record, I would have. He never asked. Do you think it's because you blatantly lied to him on your first date? <laughs> he didn't know that until I told him myself, like a noble woman. You are so noble. <laughs> You are so noble. <laughs> Guys, we have a really special treat today for the, um, I was going to say visual listeners, and it's like, what? What are you talking about? Oh, oh, we're for wearing the, the same outfit. We are matching right now. We went to Drake last night. Um, it was amazing, although I will say Drake was doing some funny stuff on stage. I <laughs> love Drake. I just want to, so we, once a month, Brooke and I, put our sister wives hat on <laughs> and I can't really get into that much more out of respect for someone's privacy which is something I'm learning okay <laughs> TW it's a, it's a day by day battle okay um but where we we both go on a date with the same person at once I feel like that's like kind of the vibe we thought was gonna happen yesterday we went to breakfast and we were like what if we went to Drake tonight and yeah. she's like let me make a call and literally like before we even got our food at our table we had three tickets to drake one for her one for me and one for this man you know they were amazing seats row one amazing seats amazing seats he's such a sleigh and i love him so much but it's just fun when you and i i know but well, what's fun to someone. me about it is that it's not thruple vibes at all like he only likes you so it's like i get to just enjoy the time damn it <laughs> best date ever. i guess it is me like trying to push the thruple vibes i know i'm like here tana you go ahead and sit in the middle yeah <laughs> fuck off <laughs> Um, but we went to Drake and it was such a good time. It was such a sleigh. And I kept saying as a joke, this is my era's tour. And it was a joke. I loved era's tour, but I love Drake so much. And Brooke, you just kind of like passively. I, I dabble Drake. with Drake, but I just feel like after the last concert I went to before this was era's. Yeah. And that's 70,000 people. And every single person is like so high energy. So obsessed. Yeah. Like. And I feel so that. I just was in there and I was like, oh, hotline bling. But yeah, the crowd is a very different vibe and the Eras crowd is unmatched. But so I'd be like rapping every word, so excited to see Drake. And then Drake would do something and Brooke would just start dying laughing. Because <laughs> he's like a little goofy. Like, I don't know how to explain. Like, w like when he runs, like his legs like kick his butt. <laughs> 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 and why are you running? Brooke Men was run. men should never run but um yeah Brooke was like dying laughing at that he was, was really good funny. though we're in our concert era tomorrow we're going to Zach Bryan courtesy of Miss Brianna Chicken Fry which is so awesome of Brie I know like so so we did her podcast in New York and we were just talking about how much we love Zach Bryan and we're so happy for her and like and as a joke I'm like as a friend you better hook us hook us up with some tickets and then she actually she did. really put us in a group chat like three days later and she was like here you go like love so her. sweet so so sweet speaking of brianna um she's on a podcast that i went on yesterday okay you made it on time i saw dude there is nothing like knowing you have a podcast with dave portnoy to like wake you up like i went to bed at 5 a.m my insomnia has been so bad and i woke up at 7 55 like bells on like ready like it just like he terrifies me so yeah, that adrenaline scary. got me going i did bffs yesterday because <sighs> why <laughs> because bryce hall had some choice words choice words to say about me online and i'm really honestly not gonna like get into it and go full canceled mode and full tana mode and full whatever because i did address it on bffs and then yesterday so i do bffs and then i'd been texting jeff and he's like can we do an episode and i was like absolutely like I'll come over and do an episode like after BFFs. That's perfect. I'm already ready. BFFs is kind of stressful. Like I sit down and they send me the docket and it's just like 80 scandals. And it's like, what's your take on this? Like, it's very much like That's scary. you've got to put your PR hat on, you know, and like they're yeah, going to grill What are you going to do? You know? Have them cut it. They would never ever. And so I put my PR hat on. I answered all my scandals and I'm like, now oh, this is perfect. I'm going to go over to Jeff's. All my friends are there. 
TW friend. <laughs> I don't know who's friends and who's not friends anymore. Oh, yeah. Shout out Bryce. But so I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm going to go over there and just kick it with everyone. It'll be like a funny episode, like whatever. And I sit down on Jeff FM and we're talking for like 10, 15 minutes. And at the end of the episode, sometimes we'll take callers over there, which we are actually working on a canceled hotline. Yeah. The Yovan style for you guys to call in and tell us your problems via voicemail. And we're going to give you um, our advice, which will be terrible. But normally we do callers at the end of the episode and 15 minutes in the phone rings. And I just immediately knew I was like, you this is Bryce Hall calling in. He called in. Jeff had Bryce Hall call in and we like tussled it out on Jeff FM. He would do that. What a, like, what a good way to get the exclusive. Yeah. And honestly, good to him. You know what I mean? He was being so funny. He was like, Dave Portnoy wishes he could have this. So what do we have to wait to see that episode or do I get to know what he said? It was just weird. Like we started talking and I'm, I'm very much standing my ground. Like I firmly believe how I feel about this situation i think bryce and i were friends good friends i would I venture to say so as well and so much of it wasn't on camera and like any content we made was mutual and like on his accounts as well yeah, he benefited from it just as much as you did as if you like clout chased him so hard i don't know it pissed me off yeah it just made no sense to me and so then we go back and forth and then he was kind of apologizing in like a Bryce way. Like, I'm sorry it made you feel that way. Ooh, and then what a man. And then eventually gets to the end and is like, I wouldn't say we're friends. I would say we're mutuals. And then Jeff's grandpa is like, what's a mutual? And then I'm like explaining mutuals to Jeff. And like, I guess to Bryce, we were mutuals. I mean, for those who don't know, long, long story short, Bryce, um, <laughs> Oscar Slay. That is good. But <laughs> <laughs> what a hysteria. So mutual. That's my favorite photo I think I've ever seen. Just did a bump. Pose. <laughs> <laughs> He's no. like, Tina dragged me. Thank God the photo's not branded. <laughs> to be fair, that was. <laughs> Shout out after party. <laughs> you know, take it off the fucking screen. I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, long, 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 long story short, Bryce went on Zach saying. On Zach saying, he. Nothing Zach, good ever happens on Zach saying. Zach. <laughs> It's fair. Zach asked Bryce, have you ever hooked up with anyone for clout? Bryce said me. There was a level of backlash to that because that is kind of a crazy sentiment. Then people of the internet were kind of saying, Tana, you do that too. And I, that frustrates me because I like to clout farm, but like, I'm only ever going to talk about someone I hooked up with if it's public knowledge or if they talk about it first or if it's a crazy ass story. Yeah, you story. should hear about the ones you don't know. And they give me the go ahead. Like, I'm never going to sit down and be like, do you guys want to know the most famous person I fucked or could have fucked or what? Like, that's yeah. not... I'm not, and at the end of the day, it's a penis inside of you. I'm not like clout, clout, clout. Like you have to like, like the person. Like I'm not touching, <laughs> knocking genitals with someone for like a potential engagement boost. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, and so then I addressed that on canceled and then I went on saving grace podcast. And I think this was kind of the nail in the coffin for Bryce, in my opinion, where, you yeah. know, Bryce had just tweeted his fight was coming up. He was like, I need Tana to say Team Bryce on God. That's crazy because you guys aren't friends. So why would you say that? Period. And that that's the whole thing, dude. Team Bryce on God, yes, it ended up being such a bit and a viral yeah, thing. You're whatever. fucking welcome, dude. But I was there supporting my friend, in my opinion. Like, this shit really did hurt my feelings because, like, I really supported Bryce, like, yeah. no matter what. And felt like that was a mutually reciprocated thing. I don't know. And so then, on Saving Grace, you're just making jokes back and forth. I She said something like he's he just needs to sell his fight or something and then like i think i made a joke whatever bryce unfollows me right after this podcast and i'm like i didn't know if there was a correlation or whatever and then he goes on bffs and he's like we were never ever friends i never liked her blah 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 which just confuses the shit out of me i don't know that's um, so interesting okay maybe that's what it was like that was his experience but it's like okay then what like like, why, why, why keep coming back why come over like why, why come you over know why I mean? invite like, me to every party why come to like support dizzy why yeah like if it was like so one-sided doesn't yeah. make any and sense. then and then he was just going on to be like we were co-workers blah, blah blah which i get that I, there are people i feel that way with but i didn't feel that way with bryce you know and i think it is a valuable lesson i guess that in this industry you might think you, someone cares about you as much as you care about them or yeah. whatever well but, now you know and you you, you know, know to direct your energy elsewhere yeah, i kept saying it to jeff yesterday i was like are we just co-workers like are we mutuals like now i like yeah don't. imagine a year from now jeff's like literally I, I that was not 
my friend. Yeah, like I would be like, uh, like, like, oh, I'd kill myself. That's different. I mean, I care about Jeff way more. That's but. okay. You, at least we know that he is suffering because Addison Rae just brought back well, pop music. I don't think he's suffering. <laughs> uh, Bryce, I'm not, I don't, I do just want to say very, very quickly as well, just to touch on this. I would love two weeks without a scandal or drama. Three even. Three. Just three. Well. Like today's episode, I am not, I am, like that car ride was so fun. I thought we were friends. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> no, he looks like co-workers. He like, uh, um, I'm bummed because I thought, I thought I was like secondhand friends with Bryce. And now like what? He was my secondhand mutual. That's, I, I got no, he comes on He's like, I love Brooke. But can't imagine. <laughs> Anywho. Yeah. Addison Ray did just drop a new album. Addison Ray is saving pop music. She is an icon. I completely agree. Yeah. I love her so much. To die for. I feel like sincerely her career arc and her story arc. Let me put my girl boss town hat on right now. This is just my opinion. Um, but is going in the way of like a modern day Britney Spears. Yeah, I think so like too. Very TikTok. Louisiana, like very she just is like so cute to me. I am obsessed like a with modernized, her. you know, not TikTok version, but today's societal, like the same way society loved Britney and the good mm-hmm. ways as well, because now we have regulations on just things like everything, paparazzi. Everything like down to her pop yeah, her paparazzi photos, she just like like she eats every, every time. time like, okay, okay, Oscar. Okay, you're having so much fucking fun <laughs> Oscar, over there. Oscar, did you take an Adderall or something? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so that's all. i don't want any drama bryce and i can now just continue on no yeah mutual. i'm just writing for you a little hard i just like he's weird for that in my opinion but i get it if he just thought you guys were mutuals whatever mari's my mutual <laughs> <laughs> we're co-workers co-workers is crazy that's the one you're forced to be around this isn't fucking and neither even have a job like for real. what i would say like back in the day when i would do like escape the night i'd see like colleen ballinger and like we weren't ever close but if we were like in the same trailer or getting ready or whatever we would laugh Toxic and have fun and it was a fun guts. moment but i could walk away from that being like we were co-workers you know what i mean like yeah. the, just the amount of like memories i have associated with bryce like leads my brain to be different i need to stop i could talk about this for the next hour i don't know um but there's no hard fe- feelings, I guess, except for mine. Maybe something <laughs> happened when he got hit. Huh? Maybe something happened during his fight. Maybe they, like, knocked some. I don't... Probably knocked some <laughs> sense into him. He was like, fuck that bitch, Tana. <laughs> um, but Clout farming ho. Speaking of fights and beef. Oh. Dylan fucking Dennis. Just kidding. Am I? So Dylan Dennis is about to fight Logan Paul, I think, in October. Yes. And what he has been doing to poor sweet Nina online is out of order. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Well, I was going to get into okay. that. I was going to get into that, Oscar. I was going to get into that. Holy shit. Um, Oscar is wild. And, You're killing it today. Um, it's crazy because I understand that with a fight promotion, it is pretty no holds barred. Like there, that's one of the things that you know going into promoting a fight that nothing is really off limits with someone. You don't know where but your that, opponent's going to take it. But like but so low, it just sucks. What I think that I hate is it's not at Logan. It's kind of at the expense of an innocent. Yeah, but that's like the smartest thing to do if you really want to hurt somebody. Like go for the people they care about. Yeah, I mean, there's not, a lot not to be to said. Say it's a good idea. There's a lot to be said about it being amazing promotion for the fight but i i do love nina so much first of all even if every single thing that he was posting was true which it isn't half of them are edited photos and stuff like inspirational like she's an icon she's fully a fucking icon i just think that i was talking about this yesterday as well but like i'm the type of person where i put that type of shit out there and like I, for example, could handle if someone was doing that to me, mm-hmm. you know, or if I, or if I was beefing that person, you know what I mean? But I, Nina's character, she's like just the sweet, like, I, I just feel like she's very strong, but I could see this frustrating her or maybe hurting her yeah, and that sure. like hurts my feelings. Especially because like, no offense, but the people who follow and like idolize Dylan Dennis. Well, it's the, it's the male like side of Twitter. Yeah, those types of people though are like the worst people to come for you. I got a little taste of it. And my little Dylan Danis Twitter. So beef. talk to me about this. We shot a podcast with Mike and Jeff in New York. Yeah. And I mentioned in the episode how Dylan Danis had DM'd me and unsent it, which is apparently a very common theme of his that he does to literally everybody. And he posted the little clip and posted it on Twitter and just said like, hi to me or whatever. DM me again. 
and I just told him I was like not again and then we just like kind of got into it and I was like playing along because I was like how funny would it be he kept saying like I'm gonna fly you to the fight I'll put you on a jet get you to the fight so I was like how hilarious if we let him fly us to the fight and show up in like low gang (laughs) t-shirts like amazing it is absolutely hilarious but I couldn't even entertain it that long because he's just like he was bullying me and and then all his little followers were like she's fucking ugly anyway and i'm like that's how i know i'm like these people are little rats <laughs> um i i was a victim of a dylan danis stunt at one point i was at um oh, what's that club it's like closed down now i can't think of the name of the club it's one oak. what one oak. <clears throat> oh i think it was one oak um i was at, i don't know somewhere in la and Fetty Wap was performing. So I was like, yeah, baby. I was on a vibe. I was drunk. And I was meeting um, a lot of fans. This was very much like... Meet and greet club vibes. Jake Paul era. <clears throat> and so I was meeting a lot of fans. And then this guy comes up and he's like, yo, can I get a photo? And I'm drunk. I don't I like, I don't even know if I like looked at him. I just like pose. And then I wake up the next day on Twitter to Dylan Dennis being like, got your bitch at Jake Paul, like all this shit. And that's how this photo came about. Um, and I, that's the only time. And then I, I met him again and I was drunk as fuck somewhere else and like cussed him out for this essentially. And he apologized. I know it's just a name in his game. I'm yeah. Really- I think he's probably just a troll. He's probably like maybe a nice guy. He was, that's what's funny. I kept telling you, he was like posting these like, crude horrible tweets to me like he posted like kermit the frog's like gaping asshole and was like brooke when she sees my dms but then he's texting me on the side like i'm so sorry if i hurt your feelings (laughs) do you want me to delete it like i'll delete it if you want me to like are you okay like i'm like dylan dylan yeah it's 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 a crazy i don't know it's a crazy thing obviously i always hope logan wins every single one of his fights so that, i just that want i just here. want logan to win justice for nina I, that i like actually feel bad for her that's like i mean to be fair he literally said brooke on twitter no brooke in reality if uh, uh, go ahead and uh, honestly oscar i'll send you the screenshots it's literally him text me back hello are you gonna text me back no <laughs> the funniest like thing. what do you mean <laughs> <laughs> What Tell me why I want to start reality. using that meme. Just imagine Brooke doing that. We need to like start using that meme. <laughs> I know. That meme is like me for... Ah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, see, he's like, want me to delete? Did you see my tweet? You said yes. And then he's... <laughs> I said, delete your account. <laughs> he said, I'm blowing you up. Stop it. Doing God's work. Everyone in their damn oh God. Oh my God. And then he's DMing me on Instagram like, hello, text me back. Like love you dylan but i love delete your account it's just funny because because then people on on twitter like you wish he would give you the time of day i'm like do you see how this began like (laughs) like he's stalking me (laughs) (laughs) that's why security's outside of the house yes he's not gonna text me back no i'm off the clock is crazy <laughs> i'm off the clock is crazy text me back no guess you aren't different. is that the reason you're he the told th- me he's like you seem like you're different from other girls he's like oh baby i'm not <laughs> that's a regular sized razor i'm just dainty as fuck <laughs> oh my god anyway okay. good luck yeah. logan good luck logan dylan master marketer but we stand nina it's the calm before the holiday storm but you can prepare your e-commerce business for the holiday rush now just by using ShipStation. whether you're shipping from your house or a warehouse ShipStation can help increase your profitability save time automating your shipping and returns in the ShipStation dashboard and keep costs down with industry leading carrier discounts while your holiday orders roll in it is so easy to use the ShipStation dashboard to manage your orders ShipStation has a free trial and quick setup. Now is the time to try ShipStation if you've been on the fence. ShipStation shipping rates are the lowest on the market. You can quickly and easily update crucial order information and reduce errors. Effortless integration everywhere you sell online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. Manage orders, print labels, compare rates, optimize every shipment, and automate delivery notifications. ShipStation has enterprise solutions that reduce warehouse costs and improve profitability. ShipStation's robust automations and reporting make scaling easy. And as your business grows, you can save thousands on shipping costs. ShipStation has industry-leading discounted rates from USPS, UPS, DHL, and Global. Mobile post. Get discounts up to 84% off USPS and UPS rates. Over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce businesses with ShipStation. And 98% of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life. Set your business up for holiday season success with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com and use code CANCELED today 
and sign up for your free 60 day trial. That's shipstation.com code canceled. We went on tour. Yeah, we did. <laughs> it was so fucking fun. I had the best time. I truly. had, it was sincerely like, I, I just haven't toured in so, so, so long. And being back in it was like the best feeling in the world. And it's, we always make jokes, I feel like, about like how our audience is so crazy and our audience is so feral. And I believe that and I know that every day when I meet someone on the street, like I know it and I agree. But when there is like a thousand of you in a room. It is insane. We had a whole segment that we want to get into and it, maybe we'll wait till the end of the tour, but it was just shit that people would tell us at the meet and greets. Oh my God, like, such good ones too such good ones the one that's sticking out in my head right now the bush story no what's the bush story oh that girl told me she said like something about how i encouraged her to get a bush oh god i forgot the rest of it <laughs> <laughs> but i was like oh no all i have in my notes is bush story we met this girl who had just recovered from battling leukemia mm. and she was super sweet and so dope and then she was telling us the story about how when she was like 13 years old with leukemia, she got a make-a-wish and she made her make-a-wish on Ellen. And then Ellen came to the hospital with like to see her or whatever. And then Ellen was like, and these are her words. This is what this girl said that Ellen allegedly was so fucking mean to her and like didn't talk to her and like when she did it was like so mean and like only she talked said to her it was like super dismissive and awkward and like ellen just didn't talk and then left and they were trying to have us chant like fuck ellen like i remember we were on stage and they like were screaming fuck ellen from the crowd like we just had so many people black the fuck out jeff and i took a selfie at one of the shows so jeff and mike were special guests for two of the shows which was so fun um very helpful too very very helpful like they the were just off. they were just so fucking funny and it was in mike's hometown um of connecticut so it was like cool to see but um jeff and i took a wholesome selfie on the stage after like after as we were like walking off we always take selfies with everyone in the crowd or like try to take photos and if we can if the venue permits um and jeff and i take this wholesome selfie and he posted on a snap like immediately right oh no was someone like flashing the camera or something? hours later jeff texts me and i look at it again and i'm like oh that's so sweet like why'd you text me this and he's like no look at the photo bitches in the back titties out love that and those girls were a lot of people got kicked out for being too drunk too like it was just oh yeah there was a fight at one of our shows there like, was a fight at the, a fist fight between men which it's like like why were straight men even there that's crazy i feel like it's the boyfriends who get dragged that's a whole other thing that is so funny to me i love at it. every show there's always like seven boyfriends who got dragged by their excited ass girlfriends at gunpoint. And it's like, they usually don't even want to meet us. They don't want a photo. They don't smile. Like if you catch a look at them in the crowd, it's like, you have to look away. Cause it's like, you're like, I'm doing so bad. Like they're miserable, <laughs> which is just wild as is. It was my first time. So this was the first time I'd ever even like, cause you can see like a number, but I've never been able to like conceptualize like that many people, like, or mm. had them all in one place to be like, Oh my God, people watch this show. Yeah, in so Pittsburgh, was, we were, like, crying on the stage. It was, it was so, so scary, people. though, for me. Like, first of all, I've never even given a speech in front of the class. So, like, like this is funny because it's like, oh, haha, like, nobody's here. Yeah. But, like, doing the same thing with a thousand people in front of you, I was, like, pissing myself. And the thing is, too, is, like, the crowd so badly wants you to get, like, wasted with them because they're all wasted. Within reason. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I, but they're not wait, they're not wasted within reason. So it's easy to like yeah. want to match the energy. You know what I mean? And at our final show in Pittsburgh, I'm skipping ahead. But so every show has a, a bar, you know, and a lot of the bars like make a menu of the drinks. And like for I, reference, one of the bars had like Tana's pussy juice. Tana's wet pussy no. was like one of their drinks. Like, the, And they name them. We don't name them. And now I know that we, again, we should a lesson learned that we have to now pre-screen the menus. And at our final show, someone tags us in a photo of the menu. They were serving like a jungle juice type of drink. So this crowd was <laughs> Guess what it figgity. Was Guess what they named this fucking drink at our show? What'd they call it? Jake, Jake Paul, Paul juice. juice Margarita. No! I swear. What the fuck? Yeah, you gotta like look at these menus. I'm sitting here thinking like, what if it was like Clinton Kane Cosmo cocktail? 
Did they tell like, you beforehand that off. they were making menus at these venues? No. Well, they just do that. I know that. But like, and usually they are like wild, like Tana's wet, but Jake Paul juice margarita, like fuck you. God Hilarious. damn. That's, I just, know I was hurting. And then people kept bringing them up on stage and it was just yeah. like wild. And it's, it's the one that gets you like the most fucked up. Um, but yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. After that tour, um, I decided to run back 75 hard. I am... I did have McDonald's for breakfast, so I, I cheated a little today. But um, oh, I thought you meant just like sobriety. No, I'm I'm like trying to do it all again. Brooke, the um, other night she's eating pop rocks and applesauce together. Honestly, an amazing it's combination. Seventy five uh, rock hard. Seventy five. <laughs> Seventy five pop rock hard. So I'm gonna try the next run of show sober and then like compare. Um, it's just really hard. It's a big energy. Like in New Haven, for example, we had two shows. And the first show, we're like, yeah, fuck yeah, do the whole meet and greet. And then it's like you go backstage for five minutes and it's like, okay, get back on stage and run it back. And you mm -hmm. want to give that second crowd the same energy that you gave that first crowd. And that's obviously why like rock stars and like musicians and shit drink so a lot many, on yeah. tour. Cause it, some, and especially because it's like you're driving from a sprinter, which we'll get into, from every city. And like you don't really get any sleep. So mm -hmm. by the like fourth or fifth shows, you're just you haven't slept and that's what trevor was saying you know he was like you're gonna be fucking exhausted mm -hmm. it really like made me put my hats off to people like matt rife who do like three shows a night every night for like tapping into that level of energy is like god mode for it's sure insane um so we are kind of spacing them out more for the rest and um yeah we're gonna test them out sober and see how that goes but I, I don't really struggle with the alcohol thing usually it was like one particular circumstance where i just had a little too much to drink yeah, so which the I'm majority is sober again, but but it's like I really was drinking to like take the edge off and not be so nervous, and it did work. But I think I think there it's is the crowd, like for sure, like a shot before you go out on stage, fine. But then you go out there and people bring up thirty eight Jake Paul juice margaritas to the stage. Yeah, it's like it's like you go up there perfectly fine, and you get off stage and you don't even like remember what happened. Yeah, yeah, like it's it's just and it it's only fun. happened once, and, and that's, it will never happen again. And we've also done a lot of club appearance things you know and where that's our like literal where, job is to black out yeah and so it's you know it's kind of finding a balance between podcast and that because that's what the crowd wants and mm -hmm. yeah we're learning um i also feel like it's one of those things where like when someone's like offering you a drink or something like that you know like it could like potentially like make their life like they're like oh my god like i took a shot with tana I mojo know, and brooke schofield like, oh my god the amount of people who bring me like blunts before the show and they're like please smoke with me right now and i'm like i will walk out there and be like <laughs> Faded that a hoe. Y'all ever tried pop rocks and applesauce? <laughs> <laughs> just someone give me a pickle and yeah. tahini <laughs> and takis. Yeah, like it, it just munchies high tana is not good for the show, um, but it is fun. Yeah, I um, think we're gonna be good for the second round. I have a lot better, better, more stories because we've been doing some serious um, damage in our personal lives. Yeah, and in the interest of a story. 100 yeah we really want to be able to give it's also hard to always give brand new stories in the next city sometimes it is fun to like retell us because it's it's no phones for the most part but then people post all their stories and just yeah. break the rules which we didn't really like know so it's fun to like retell a story and add new things and remember new details but we are actually really really trying right now to just do some serious <laughs> damage to our personal lives which i'm sure in 10 we years we're of gonna... course we want to tell new stories that we've never told before but, but like i don't want to make only one up. so much happens in a week yeah i don't want to make one up but that's where crowd work is also fun that's one of my favorite parts of the show the last half will like I know in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, I had so much fucking fun with that. That was such um, a good, oh, everything about that show was fun. We were talking about something you find like weirdly hot. And I can't remember what ours was. Like we, that was our topic of conversation. And yours then, was turbulence. Yeah. Like, oh, like turbulence. <laughs> turbulence turns me on like super. That's ultimate poetry right there. Well, <laughs> turbulence turns me on because it's like, you're, you know how when your stomach drops on a plane, like it's the same feeling as like a dick in your stomach kind of. Okay, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was just unnecessary. And it's like, it whatever. Um, but we go into the crowd and we start asking people, like, what are things you weirdly find hot? And all the answers are funny. Like, <gasps> and I forgot. One of the girls was like, I hate to say this, but I find the security guard on stage weirdly hot. And the security guard takes his shirt off and starts like whipping it around and shit. Like, um, he was, he was hot. Um, <laughs> Dude, but he was also crazy. He was on the job, Dude, which is important. During to know. the meet and greet at one point, and thank God this girl was like funny and with the shits. But 
obviously the security's job is to get a meet and greet done in a certain you and i will stand and talk to someone everyone for uh-huh. an hour a person we don't care so it's like yeah you but know, they have to move it along for us to be on time yeah for it's everything. like okay this person's taking their third tiktok like let's let everyone let everyone have a chance to kind of you know whatever and we were talking to this girl for like a long time. We made a bunch of content with her and she had glasses on and she was super pretty. You know what I mean? But the security comes up and goes, move it, four eyes. <laughs> no fucking way. <laughs> move it, Wait. four eyes. I whip my head and I said, do you want your job? That's insane. Do you want I did your not know that job? happened. I didn't see that happen. I don't move think. it, four eyes. And that was the same security guard that then took his shirt off. Oh, he was feeling the- spunky that day. He, yeah, he was a, he was, God damn. That, that is also what's funny is when you're in cities, you know, you're in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, you're in like a rock venue, like you get these characters of venue owners. I know we've, we've had several like, no, I shouldn't say what no, I'm going to yeah, say. say that. We've had venue owners just do some really funny footy shit that we can tell one day. Um, but I want to tell two stories from the tour that have nothing to do with the shows. And the first one is about how I am so fucking stupid. Well, <laughs> I apologized for this is all I'm going to say before I get into the story. We were in our first shows were in New Haven, Connecticut. And I do just want to say that was an amazing place to start off. I had no idea we had that many fans in that region we did three well, shows crazy. at the three same sold venue. out shows in new haven connecticut I, I say it like i it's like the middle of nowhere but it like it's just far from us i'd never i'd never heard of new haven i'd never been to new haven me neither but it's um, huge apparently but it ended up being one of my favorite places i will go back i will do more shows there and it was cool we performed at toad's place and like everyone in the world has performed there like cardi b and like everyone back in the day like drake back in the day i think like all these fucking people and it was really cool but The venue and New Haven is also the town of Yale. Like Yale, the college was like five minutes from so many hot boys. So and that's why I think the crowd was also so fair on the people because it's a college town essentially, the best college. But I don't think anybody in that crowd went to Yale. No one went to Yale. No one went to Yale. (laughs) I promise you that. I promise. And if they did, reevaluate. But um, it was in the town of Yale. So. All the hotels and everything is very much themed around that oh, collegiate, whatever, you know. And we get to our hotel and we walk in and it, it is very much themed like that. Like there's bookcases everywhere. There's books like everywhere. Like it literally looks like a library. And we just we roll out of the sprinter. <laughs> we go up to our room and I check in and Mike Malak was like, hey, where are you staying? And I was like, to be honest with you, I just got handed a room key and I went right up the elevator. I don't know. And I sent him my location and he's like oh you're staying at the study and i'm like fuck yeah i'm staying at the study this shit's a study like there's books everywhere this is cute whatever and i like look at the map and it says the study you know so i'm like whatever and so then we do the shows whatever and we get back after the third show and everyone goes to their room and it's just chris and i chris miles was there honestly there's nothing to really touch on with that he was really nice and really normal and really fun and we are just friends um but we saw his family in new york and we got dinner with them and then they wanted to come to the show and support and whatever. Chris was there and Chris and I were chilling in bed and I was like, I, I want water. And of course this hotel is very much coquette, very much Lana Del Rey coded, very much lace everywhere, very much old paintings, very much books. And the only type of phone in the room <laughs> to call down to get water is a fucking rotary phone. (laughs) And you know my ass does not know how to use a rotary phone. And also, what am I going to type in on it? Like a a whole ass phone number? Like I I just, and I've stayed at hotels that are rotary phone energy. Yeah, that's a little too on theme. Like get a fucking normal phone. Like I just need just a bell desk button. That's it. That's all I'm asking for, you know, whatever. I try to figure out this rotary phone for like 10 minutes. I'm having no luck. And so finally I'm like, fine, I'll just call down on my my phone phone, my non-rotary phone. And I'm like, I go to my maps, I type in the study, I call down. And I'm like, hey, um, I'm staying in room 401. Can I please get some water? And they're like, absolutely. We'll send you up water in like 10 minutes. 10 minutes goes by, no water. I wait, I wait like 30. I'm not going to be a cunt. Like what if someone's running late, you know? 30 minutes goes by. I'm like, oh, there's still no water. So I call down and I'm like, hey, um, um, I'm in room 401. Can I please have some water? And they're like, oh, absolutely. We'll send you up water, right? 
And then they tell me another like 10, 15 minutes. This time like an hour goes by. And so this happens like three more times where like I wait the allotted time. I give them a massive grace period because you know I'm not the timeliest so who am I to ensure my water's on time and this keeps happening right and so I, I want to say three hours go by of this back and forth and I call back down to the study and I'm like hey I'm really sorry dude but this water is just not making it to room 401 I am so dehydrated like is the you know whatever and the guy goes listen I've been up to your room four fucking times like he's cussing he's yelling like he's like Four fucking times. I've banged your fucking door down. I've tried to give you water a million times. If you want your fucking water, you can come down to the front so desk. So valid, and get it. because if it's been three hours and you couldn't just use your fucking legs to get in the elevator, so, then that's on you. Facts. And I swear to God that I and I'm also just we, we've done three shows. I'm burnt out. I don't have it in me. I'm not fighting this man. You know what? And he's probably right in some realm. So I'm like, thank you so much. I'll come down and get my water. Oh. I hang up the phone. I go down to the front desk, and to my surprise. There is a sweet young woman working at the front desk. I was ready for this grown man trying to Dylan Danis my ass, you know? She's super sweet. She's like, I love your makeup. I'm talking to her. She's like, water, do you want any wine? Do you need anything? Whatever. She gives me all my water. She gives me a bottle of wine. I'm holding it all. And I'm looking at her and I'm like, thank you so much. And I look down at her shirt. Mm, what does it say, Tana Marie? The Graduate. <laughs> we are staying at the Graduate oh, Hotel. No. Right next door to the study. But not quite the study. Holy fuck. Right next door to the study. We are staying at but the who fucking... who does that? Who put... That's like putting like... You can't put two places that are like almost the same right next to each other. It's like a Walmart and a Target next door. No, yeah. I mean two hotels can be next door to each other. I go upstairs. I look at my maps because I am just in disbelief. You know what I mean? They are actually next door. The buildings are touching. I so feel... I see how my location could have inferred that to Mike. So on and so forth. I call back the study. Chris Miles actually calls. He's like, we have to apologize. We call back. Chris and I deliver an apology. And I feel so horrible I'm more for whoever was in the Yeah, that I'm most concerned about whoever was in 401 at the study. They're like, why the fuck is there so much water outside my room? <laughs> They're like, why are they banging the door down in the middle of the night? We were staying at the graduate. Yeah, it's that so was pretty like bad. so much an embarrassment from that, like so hard i don't even know it's just it's, it's so fucking embarrassing and i'm really sorry to i mean you live and you learn yeah double check your i'm hotels, glad you man. finally got your water so then we get in the car from new haven to harrisburg pennsylvania that night at like 4 a.m and or the next night i don't fucking know anymore you have options on how you get from city to city on tour you can fly you can take a tour bus, which is my personal favorite because you just get on that bus and you knock out and you actually get sleep and, you know, everyone's on time because the bus call, it's not hard. Or you can do cities really close to each other and take a sprinter. And that's something I've never done. And I don't know if I ever want to do it again, but... You fall out of one sprinter. So, well, so I guess I'll just tell this story very quickly. <laughs> we get in the sprinter and we're driving to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and... We're probably like three hours in the drive. Like we're almost there. And everyone's like, let's stop at a gas station really quick. And let's go pee. Let's get some water. Let's get some snacks. And you were sleeping. That was also my big struggle. I can't sleep on Sprinter vans. Like the seatbelt buckles just in your rib on that row. I also, there were a lot of people on this bus like laughing and whatever. But that, I just still am not... It's not long enough. I'd almost rather sleep in like a, a I slept car. like a perfect little baby because it was perfectly possible. It was like two little seats and then one seat super far and your feet have to go like that or you're curled up in a ball. Like it's just only I have trouble there were eight people on the Sprinter. I have trouble sleeping in a bed. I feel like I would do better in an SUV where it's like one long line versus that like big gap, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, but so I'm just like wide awake and... <sighs> I swore up and down this sprinter had three steps. That's too many steps. Why would there be three? Or one big one even. I've never seen a sprinter with two little tiny steps like this. And we get out to go to the gas station and I'm just confident in this. I'm on a mission. I'm going to be so quick. We're going to get to Harrisburg, whatever. I take step one. I take step two. And I go to take imaginary step three. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't exist okay when i tell you i felt like i was on the netflix show cheer 
I did she, a round off backhand spring tuck. My girl was tumbling. She finally landed like literally 30 feet from the spring. I'm actually literally not kidding you. I, I flew as it is so far from the car. My <laughs> elbow decks the fucking pavement. I realize my face is going to be next. So my hand goes down on the pavement. I like, cause you see how I'm laying, like I'm laying, like I was walking out like this. I'm laying facing the sprinter. So I like go over my hand and like onto my back and I'm like facing the sprinter. I am realistically like at least 18 to 20 feet from the sprinter probably. Yeah. Like there was some major, major traveling. So, so far. And I have a photo. Please show the photo. What I, my favorite part of the entire story, I I didn't witness it, which I loathe, but... (laughs) I heard that she was dead, silent, like well, so not a peep. And for some reason, that vision in my head is so hilarious. Like the fact <laughs> that she couldn't even like, ah, like, it was just silence. And then she just laid there in silence after she hit it. I was like, it must have been really bad. Yeah, so, awful. And here's how I know it's bad as well. I'll airdrop the photo to Oscar right now. Chris cares about me a lot. But normally when I fall, it is very much like, ha ha, <laughs> get it up, you know? And that's, that's just our energy towards each other. Chris goes and lays by me. 20 feet from the sprinter on the pavement. And then the driver Does, is just standing over me like, is she's she like, dead? I'm about to get sued. This photo. <laughs> Look was, at him. <laughs> the driver. <laughs> he doesn't even know what the fuck to do. <laughs> Here's what I want to say. Someone had to get out of the sprinter and take five steps to then take this photo. Like yeah. that is how far I was from the car. And Amari was telling Chris, like, I can just imagine the screams because normally when I fall, I scream. And Chris was like, I've never in the like four years I've seen Tana see her hurt herself and just. <sighs> like I was literally like that family guy meme, like. <sighs> I'm so sad. I wasn't. Not that I like would laugh, but you. It, it's hilarious. I fell out of the sprinter. I completely understand. It's hilarious. It's just funny because it's like, how do you like? The, you were just guessing. Like never in my life. Like imagine like getting off a bus or something and just thinking like, oh, I must have seen three steps earlier. Like you're still <laughs> looking down at your feet. And I just imagine her like coming in so confidently, like walking off this mm. bus, like just like boom, boom, and then just flying. Like the confidence. No, I was hitting yeah, like a little jog to the gas station to get my water. Like you know what I mean. Like it was. Nah. Bad. Go get your water. I get up and my entire arm, blood. So much blood. We go in the gas station and I'm like trying to hold it, you know? And Chris is like, do you guys have a bathroom? And the guy's like, not for not for patrons. And I show him my arm and he goes, it's right there. It's right down the hall. It's right there. It's right down the hall. <laughs> Let's me into the employee bathroom. There's mops and brooms. I'm not even fucking with you. I also had to pee. But so I'm like sitting down. I'm trying to wrap my hand. Blood everywhere. Oof. Blood on the mirror. Poor blood guy. On He's the like, sink. I'm never letting no. some bitch in my bathroom ever No, again. no, no. Check this one out. So then eventually I get enough toilet paper <laughs> on it. And Damien actually taught me this. Um, <laughs> great guy. Um, that if you like injure yourself, especially on your hand or your arm, you have to like hold it above your head because then your blood flow like like you'll lose the blood flow so you won't like be spewing like I was spewing so I'm holding my arm over my head like cleaning this bathroom I know I have a video of her in the back of the bus just like this (laughs) no no we get band-aids we get hydrogen peroxide I'm like in tears like I'm in so much pain like I definitely like sprained my wrist we'll get into that in a second and I I spend the rest of the car ride awake like this for the next like hour and a half however long just arm up I get to the hotel my hand is still bleeding Oh, I sleep like this. I wake up, band aid soaked, still bleeding. Uh, Show in Harrisburg, me, like, blotting, red-headed. still bleeding. And everyone's like, "You need to go to an urgent care. You need to go somewhere." And like my bones hurt, even still. Like my, I'm just, I can finally like move my wrist a little on my thumb, so that's a little bit of a slay. But I couldn't hold a microphone. I was signing my signatures with my right hand. I did my makeup with my right hand. Helen yeah, Keller would have done a better job. Went downhill. <laughs> Literally, Helen Keller would have done a better job with my glam. Like whole nine. It was just like really 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 like this is i feel like i embarrass myself 15 times a day but i'm not a big faller i don't fall off the dock (laughs) i'm kidding i don't i don't get hurt i don't fall like i i can keep myself you know if i'm wearing some stilettos maybe i'll hit a little ankle wobble you know but like other than that like this is the worst injury i've had in so long 
And, so, and look at it. It's so disgusting still. Oh, I hate when you show me that. She kept trying to touch me with it last night. I'm like, I will kill you. It's just, yeah. And I definitely need like a little cast stitch. But how do people break their dominant hand? Um, like, and then do things. I don't know. Bethany Hamilton lost her dominant arm. Literally, Chris texted me the other day and he was like, go to the doctor. I don't want you to be soul surfer. <laughs> she really made it work. Then obviously you're training your other hand. But like, what am I supposed to do? Like right now. So yeah. I just haven't been getting a cast, even though you don't need a cast. I think I need like a like a like a for splint, a, sprain, a little splint, whatever yeah. a, a sprain needs. Um, so yeah, so then that's touring with that was touring with an injury is a new yeah, thing. So off then my it was just list. like what would have already been kind of hard got a little bit harder. And do you know what we haven't talked about at all? Like we didn't even talk about it the next day. We didn't talk about it that night. We haven't talked about it at all. And it? I find that so strange because this has never happened to me on tour ever. Show in Pittsburgh was a lot bigger than a lot of the other shows. And so there was a lot of people. And every time we leave the show, we leave in a sprinter. And this venue was very serious with us. Like you cannot stop for photos outside. That's inciting a riot. There's too many people outside. Like you have to. So we, we gas it onto the sprinter and we always have the sprinter like circle the block a couple times and then like drive a weird way somewhere and then eventually get to the hotel because people always try to follow the car and show up at your hotel mm -hmm. and that's normal like a lot of times people trail you for like a second which is still not okay but I get it like back in the day like who says I wouldn't have when I was yeah, like, it's like you saw Justin Bieber's going down the street you're gonna follow him for a sec yeah like you know I like you're 16 or you're whatever like I, I get it I guess um but so for some reason this show we had three cars following our sprinter we drive we circle the block a bunch of times we drive to the hotel we pull in they pull in after us so we leave the hotel we're circling for like 20 minutes and it's also like these two guys in a pickup truck is one of them and then there's like this minivan full of people and then another car and we're just driving and driving and driving they won't stop following us and the, our tour manager is very adamant about like you guys aren't getting out of the car then like this is unsafe we don't know like who these people are what they want we have to call 911 I've never had to call 911. We have to call 911 and have so many police show up and the police like have to like go into the like show up to these people's cars and be like, what are you doing? Yeah, like, why are you and like that? make them drive away. And like we had to get a police escort to our hotel in Pittsburgh. And I was like, and then it there were all these fans outside the hotel too. And the police just didn't care at that point. They were like, eh, and they left. Did you see what just happened to Taylor Swift at what's his name's wedding? Um, Margot, Mar Margo Qualley or whatever. Margaret, Margaret Qualley just got married to Jack Antonoff and Taylor Swift attended the wedding. Okay. She just happened to be at the wedding. Like tens of thousands of people were swarming the outside, like literally all that. Like it looked like era's tour, like at somebody else's wedding. You know how fucking psycho you have to be to ruin, like destroy somebody else's wedding so that you might get a glimpse of Taylor Swift. She doesn't want you to do that. Like, she definitely doesn't want you to do that. And how mortifying. Imagine like like that I happening to you at like one sense. of your but, like good friend's weddings. And you're like, oh my God, like now the whole day is going to be about that. Like, yeah, like that's just, you'd sucks. be so embarrassed. Yeah, I'd like leave probably. Like, that's totally like, unrelated, but no, that's but what I get me what of. you're saying. Like just boundaries. I also guess. really quickly. I need to know if you've seen Taylor Sheesh or not. No. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Tana. It's like this girl in the Philippines who's impersonating Taylor Swift. Oh my God. Yes, I have. Chris's like dad was clowning him. Like, like there's more people in the crowd than like one of your shows. <laughs> oh, that is so hilarious. But like, that is so fucking funny. It's so insane how many people like, Jeez. are we, do we have the wrong job? <coughs> look, Tana Swift. <laughs> no. but, but look at these people. Like, but God. it's so iconic. And just the, the way that everybody's, more, they're more committed there than they are at the actual era's tour. Like every single We word. have to see Taylor Sheesh. I would she do just anything. sing Taylor Swift songs, duh. Yeah, and like she brought out like Taylor Laughter, like instead of Taylor Lautner. <laughs> <laughs> That's impeccable. It's so funny. Really quick, I just saw Oppenheimer. I just want to give a quick shout out. <laughs> I can't she stop fucking can't. talking about it. Here's the thing, you guys. Have you seen it? Oscar, why the fuck? Not, not why the fuck, because he, it's not that he doesn't deserve it, but like you don't know how distracted I was by Josh Peck having like a very integral like role in the movie. He doesn't have like a ton of lines or anything, but like he has a really fucking important like job in the movie. And I'm like, not that I think he's not like he's a wonderful actor, but like it's a timepiece on World War Two. And somebody on the casting team was like, Josh Peck, for sure. I OK, I don't mean to react underwhelmed, but Brooke, I have watched Brooke tell this. To 35 people <laughs> in the past three days. I've heard more about Josh Peck in Oppenheimer than 
anything because it's so it's so amazing it's so like out of nowhere he hasn't done like really a lot of like acting since yeah. like drake and josh and stuff and he's in the most anticipated movie like literally yeah. ever like that is crazy it is actually i'm we so should... proud of him i just think it's like the coolest thing we should have josh on um soon i want to have him on so bad now he, he like he's the star of my favorite movie we should have him on because he's very much like trevor i think people wouldn't he just riffs really well he was amazing Congrats, by the way and he totally josh deserved Beck. the role but like einstein's in the movie yeah <laughs> it is very very random like hug me brother meets einstein yeah like but... it was just such an interesting story i was thinking like maybe there was someone young on the casting team who was like oh my god how funny would it be like because like yeah. all the higher-ups probably wouldn't even know yeah and then like what if he just like what if we get him in the movie josh peck deserves everything he has he's an amazing human he's so amazing I, I, I love to see that i don't want to take away from that but i just like speaking of josh can i just tell a really funny story please i'm his biggest fan no no, no this is about you oh. is it uh, last night yes it's last yes night. please <laughs> wait what is so it? <laughs> first of all l- like we already said this guy is taking us to drake and again you listen to drake kind of like in the club like you know the hits but brooke has been pretending to this guy all day she's like i love drake i'm his biggest fan i know all of his songs so on and so forth to feel like his money was wasted yeah no 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 it was super sweet like i get why you're doing that like you want him to think you know and it it was a funny bit for us too like me pretending you're also like a diehard drake fan it was funny Um, but so brooke is trying to like do some research (laughs) before the drake show yesterday and she posts about it or something and someone dms her and you needed a drake lyric for something like a caption (laughs) or whatever you go tana is this a drake lyric and i'm like what is it You, you go it's going to take some time to realign. And I'm like sitting here trying to be like, it's going to take some, like wrapping it in my head, like trying to figure out what song that could be. It's Drake Bell. <laughs> it's going to take some time to realign. I think it's realize. I thought it was realized too, but I think it's actually realign. It's realign. Yeah. No, but I thought it was realized my whole childhood. <laughs> Drake Bell was one of my first concerts. I think that's what made me like a slut. Like I remember being like 13 <laughs> and I was like, slut me out, Drake. I'll never forget the night we were standing outside of Barley's and he's standing there and he was looking at you like he had a wax pen in his hand. He was looking at you like you were a piece of pizza. I was like, oh you my God. You should have like, done that the for the fuck? culture. I should have at the time do it for the culture after all of his um, forthcomings and uh, legal battles and scandals. Yep. Have you seen that podcast? That's like the Basement Yard podcast. No, looking it up right now. Hold on, please. It's like two guys and they are so funny. Like I'm in love. They with are so funny. John, John. I like, have seen them. I followed him and he followed me back. I, I want to like DM him something crazy, but I don't know what to say. Oh my God. That's actually funny because I also have a double date I want us to go on, but they're TikTokers, of course. Joe, yeah. Oh, he's not going to fuck me. Why? Wait, I don't want him to fuck you. I want him to fuck me. Oh, okay. Not fuck. I want him to date me, respectfully. (laughs) I also have a double date I want us to go on, but it's two TikTokers. This is so on brand for us. No TikTokers. No, but they're comedians. They're funny. But all week, you have been telling me that you have a love life update for me and that you will not tell me until we're on the podcast. Oh, it wasn't. It's not like so serious. Like I I just didn't want to say for the podcast it's because i think the podcast is what ruined it that's why tell me now it wasn't like anything serious or anything but like i haven't hooked up with anybody in a really long time like i it went like i had the breakup then mr dc Mm. and then that's the only new person i've slept with until this new recent person okay yeah he's like someone we met at a work event and i was like we love him i did sleep with him the first time I hung out with him which was like something I probably wouldn't have done had I had my head on straight yeah little because not drunk. not that I didn't want to but because he's like definitely someone you would want to date he's like a he, good job like good personality like a good yeah he's like a guy you want to date not like a guy you just want to hook up with so I was like oh I blew it but then we went and you on, talked like, about him on the Mike episode yeah you were like talking about the guy like, yeah the seven days guy I feel like I brought it back because then we went on like a good date after that. We'd hung out a couple times yeah. and like, you know, we'd, we'd hang out like at our office yeah. and like he'd come have drinks with like all our friends. And I was like, okay, this is like going well. Okay. And I just like, I liked him. He was like, I was like, it's a vibe. He comes over the other night and I'm like all excited. Like we had just been with him at spring place all day, like drinking and stuff. He comes over and he's like, first thing he says, he says like, so I'm sure you hooked up with Mike in New York. And I'm like, no. That's also just a crazy, like, possessive, like, psycho thing No, to but, say. no, but it was, like, it, that was, like, the first offense, okay? So he, like, kept making, like, comments about, like, Mike and stuff. And I was, like, I didn't hook up with Mike. At all. At you were, all. like, cheering on Mike's bitches. Yeah. And so yeah. I was, like, that was kind of strange. But I was, like, okay, I'll let it slide. And then we're watching, like, a documentary. And he's, like, oh, you should DM that guy. And I'm, like, 
I, like shit okay. like that gets me hot i know and shit like, like that gets me I, so yeah, and I'm like, hot i'm like what the fuck like kind of weird he says like a third thing like along those lines oh i say like the cat's scared of you or something and he was like oh i'm sure the cat sees guys all the time i'm like god damn no like i go actually the cat's literally met like the cat's only met mr dc like no, yeah. no one else has come over yeah and so i'm like no she doesn't like you're like her like second guy she's ever seen and he was like oh i'm sure and i literally was like he That's thinks like, i'm a fucking whore and just to talk to you like you're a fucking whore is crazy like, that, you well, think that, was, that was crazy i was like i was so like taken aback because i was like oh my god this guy like thinks if he doesn't think so he's definitely like talking to me like i'm literally some fucking whore yeah and like maybe i've made myself kind of seem that way because like obviously i have a podcast that's literally about like sex and fucking but it's also not it's like about our lives and also that if you're telling my thing as well is if i tell someone like oh the cats only met two guys you're gonna it's now fighting territory when you hit me with like an i'm sure because I told you that. I just yeah. told you. But it was just like, I, like that's the truth. Like, that is the actual my truth. I literally, he's the mad. second person I've slept with since my relationship a year ago. Yeah. Like, that's the, like, that's the truth, okay? Maybe I seem online like I'm a little more outside than that. And obviously, we tell, like, really out-of-pocket stories. But, like, the whole time, you know, he was calling me on tour. And, like, we're talking, like, FaceTiming and stuff. And he was being so sweet and so nice. And it was, like, something switched where all of a sudden he was like, yeah, like, you should DM that guy. I'm sure you DM all these guys. I'm sure you hooked up with my... I was like... Oh my god! So now, like, it hasn't talked to me since. Ew! I mean, the trash took itself out, I guess. I know, but I'm like bummed. Like, I'm like, what did I do? I like, but you don't want to be with someone like that. I know, but it was it was such a stark like shift. Like, it he was not like that at all. And then, like, I was like, did I do something, or like, did he hear something that he didn't like, or something? Like, and that's annoying because you're gonna encounter him again. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I you know, like he's always at the office that we work out of. Like, we Natalie works out of an office that we all go to and like have meetings and stuff there, and he mm. works out of there a lot too. So I like see him. Anything I could say is just so mean to this man. No, like, I, like, and I don't. I'm not gonna do that because I. I don't know him. I've he's never a cool met him. Guy. Like I still like, um, but like, whatever. I had a good time with him and stuff, but now I'm like, now I feel like annoyed that I slept with him so fast. Cause it's like, if I knew he was going to act like that, I just wouldn't have done it. Yeah. Cause now I waste it. Now I've slept with two guys since my relationship. And now I, what the fuck? Murphy's yeah. going to have to meet another one. Well, Murphy's going to meet a good one soon. Cause that is that he, I just, even you don't want to be with a guy with those kind of ideals or someone who thinks they can talk to someone. I'm like that. out of the phase in my life where I like sleep with guys that I don't like, or like, I'm not, I yeah. don't want to date. Oh, and I think goes, me too. Oh, oh, this is what he said. This is what he said. I forgot. This is the most important part. I go, I didn't hook up with Mike and he goes, it's fine. Like we're just having fun. I'm not, I am personally not having fun. Yeah. I am not just having fun. Yeah. I am 26 years old. I'm not fucking hooking up with anybody just having fun. Yeah. Like, so thank you for telling me, but like that was not my vibe at all this whole time. Yeah. And like to my knowledge, it wasn't yours either. So like, what yeah. the fuck? So then I was like laying there like, okay, well, I'm never going to see this guy again. It's crazy. How old is he? He's young. He's 23. Oh, I was, I thought he but was older. But he seems a lot older than that because he has a really but good that, job. Like, he has a job you shouldn't shows. have if you're like 23. The 23 just shows yeah. in that like, in that demeanor. You know what I mean? Ew. Right. Weird, right? Ew. Um, but I don't know. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. And I'm not a whore. And I didn't hook up with Mike. And now I wish I did. I want to have a, a spiritual conversation for the end of today's episode of Cancel, if okay. that's okay. Do you believe in synchronicity? Or are you aware... Can you define it for me? ...of the concept of it? That weird coincidences aren't always weird coincidences. I, I feel like the base of synchronicity is like people will be like, oh my God, I see 11-11 every day. Like, mm -hmm. or oh my God, I see... Like, this number follows me everywhere. Oh, my God, this shit happens or whatever. And I used to make YouTube videos about this. I really believe in synchronicity. I have a tattoo for it. I have a little 11-11 on my head. But this happens to me a lot in phases of my life where all of a sudden, all of these weird coincidences start happening. Like, super weird. Where it's like, that that shouldn't be. Like what happened with the heckler. Like, yes. when all those weird things started yes. happening. And it was like, what? Exactly. And... People who believe in synchronicity, people who are spiritual and believe in it, the basis of it, the consensus of synchronicity is this is the universe or your guardian angel or some people believe it's, you know, someone from the other side who's dead or God or just whatever it is, whatever your spirituality is, is telling you to pay attention. It doesn't necessarily mean something good or something bad. It means either the universe has your back or the universe is telling you like, be aware of what's happening in your life right now. Mm -hmm. And a lot of periods of my life where I've had a lot of synchronicity, someone ended up dying or I found out my someone I was so in love with was cheating on me for years or 
something terrible happened with my family or good things. You know what I mean? Or it's like I'm on the right path and I needed to stay on that path and whatever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And this started happening in like Italy. And I just want to tell you some of these. But for some reason, it does give me a bit of anxiety because again, in periods of my life. Yeah, it could be good, could be bad. Yeah, like, and it, it really makes me start to spiral. And maybe it's nothing. And maybe all coincidences are just coincidences. It's just not like what I believe. And I need to tell you, like a couple, okay? okay? This all started in Europe. It's been chill lately, but like it's just super weird. I'd never seen the movie. Is it Bring It On, In It To Win It? Burr, it's cold in here. Do you mm -hmm. know what I'm talking about? Okay, so I'd never seen the movie. Ty Collins kept doing this thing in Europe where he would just start doing the chant from Bring It On, like burr, it's cold in here. Like doing it everywhere, <laughs> like under the Eiffel, Eiffel Tower. Like just everywhere we were, Ty kept doing it. And I was like, I've never seen this movie. And so he made me watch Bring It On. So then I'm doing it with him like the whole time all around Europe. We just keep doing it. And it's, it's really fucking funny. I'm not going to lie. Like Ty's mm -hmm. just, he's delivering it so funny. And then our friend flies out to Europe to see us, like two of our friends. And they get there and he walks in the house and doesn't know we've been doing this for days and days and days. And the first thing he does is go, burr, it's cold in here. And I'm like, what the fuck? That's so weird. Like, how did you know we've been doing this for like days? Yeah, wait, what? And we're in such a specific thing. Like, because it was cold in the room. Like he was just saying yeah. it's cold in here, but he did it like that. And I was like, we all just stand up. And you we're should like, have ran from a guy who's doing that. We're like, how the fuck did you know this? And we're like grilling him. And he's like, what are you talking about? Like, it's just cold in here. Like I, I have seen the movie, bring it on, whatever. And we're like, okay, that's like super fucking weird, but like, whatever, you know what I mean? Later on that night, we all get back from the Eiffel Tower and we're chilling at their apartment. Um, and all these old classic songs are playing and Ty, like Frank Sinatra and shit. And Ty and I are making up dance routines like to the songs and we're dancing. And then I'm like, Ty, in middle school, I learned this tap dance routine. Like I wanna teach you it. And so I'm teaching Ty this tap dance routine, right? Like this whole elaborate tap dance routine for like 45 need minutes. need to see you perform it. I have tap shoes and I will do it after this. It is my life's goal. She's like, flap, 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 flap. Flap, flap, peel, flap, peel, flap, peel, whole thing. I was teaching Ty this whole thing. And eventually Ty's like, what song is this to? And I'm like, it's to this song, Hit the Road, Jack. Like, hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more. That's, <laughs> that cra too. that's crazy because that was my first recital song weird see i don't like it i don't i don't know i don't know check this one out frank sinatra's playing out of the tv the remote is on the fucking table like the remote's on the table no one is manning what's playing the frank sinatra song stops playing and hit the road jack just starts playing like randomly i fall to the floor i tear up i'm like what why did this song fuck? just cut off in the middle of the song why are we in the middle of paris and i'm teaching you something from my eighth grade like dance hit the road jack like for, it was a frank sinatra playlist why is this now playing out of the tv like what do you get what i'm saying yeah what the fuck and then okay wait it I, wasn't like a hey siri situation by accident no and then wow. we're in the car we get in the car to go somewhere we're playing all these old classic songs still i'm looking for that song it's like i can't think of the words i'm like da da Da, da. nope that was bad no one's gonna get it they play it at the end of david dobrik's videos all the time like it's like mama or like, save mama. Me. Oh. that like save me oh, i'm lost that. I'm lost. that song and i'm trying no, to think of the name I've of it waiting for you and i'm like they played at the end of david dobrik videos all the time like it was at the end of all of david's old vlogs blah 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 blah, blah. and i'm watching david's vlog to try to like get the lyrics to try to find the song and whatever and then someone out of the blue in the middle of paris it's like 3 a.m in paris calls ty and is like are you going to david dobrik's party tonight like in that moment as i'm watching a david vlog which i haven't done in like years yeah really like, weird super weird so that's like just this whole day right like keeps happening then the next day we're eating in this i'm almost done but i just i have to like no because i have one chest. too that happened to me today but I need it. Do you want to tell me your? No, it was it was like way like less than that. But I had a thought today because I was uh, like in the middle of doing my makeup. I was looking through TikTok, and I was like, I just had the thought like, should I use like this mascara, or this mascara? And then the very next video was the mascara I was thinking about. And Which I was is, like, oh well, then that's the one I'm supposed to use. But I was like, what the fuck are the odds that that would pop up? Like it was almost like like the ad was like tracking my brain. Which just freaks me the fuck out, right? Next day, we're in a cafe in Paris, and they're only playing Parisian music. Like, it's it's very much like, 
Swale, to swale. Like, that's the vibes. And then randomly, <laughs> randomly, they start playing Alaska by Maggie Rogers, at, which is an amazing fucking song. And I'd been listening to this, the Zach Bryan, Maggie Rogers song like all day. I'm like, I love Maggie Rogers. I love this song, whatever. And we end the lunch and Paige is like, hey, you have a Zoom meeting to hire your new like tour manager. Like get on the meeting, see if you vibe with her, whatever. I get on this Zoom with Hannah and we're, we're just talking about tour and tour management and all this type of stuff. And I'm like, oh, what? Like, who have you worked with before? And she's like, well, I just got off Maggie Rogers tour. I just worked for Maggie Rogers. And what I'm a, like, what a downgrade. It's such a downgrade to come from Maggie Rogers. <laughs> I know. To she's cancel. like, yeah, I was with Gracie Abrams. I'm like, you mean my favorite artist of literal all time? Which is just but that's crazy. But I'm I wonder like, what that is. Oh, maybe something, maybe I'm about to cheat on you. We were all flying out of Europe and we had to go back to London. And so I was really hard trying to make this Peppa Pig bus tour happen in London. They have tours all around the city. I was hoping you would get to do that. I ended up having someone be able to like rent it out for me and I'm able to do it, but my flight just didn't allow enough time like to leave the airport, go do the Peppa tour and come back. You know, it was like close, but not enough time. And I had to get home. And so I'm super like sad about this. Like I love Peppa Pig more than anything. When am I going to be in London again? There's a Peppa Pig theme park in Florida. Orlando. I know. Um, (laughs) I'm super sad about this, whatever. And someone I'm with, like this the Parisian guy I'll just say it whatever he didn't know who Peppa Pig was so I'm telling him all about Peppa they they probably have like Pepe Pig (laughs) oh wait no it was Peppa the Pew it's Peppa in there or that's where Peppa's from right no but she's from like London she's British Um, so he doesn't know who Peppa Pig is so I'm telling him all about Peppa and then he randomly opens up his Instagram timeline and someone he grew up with in Paris had just gotten a Peppa Pig tattoo right which is already just a weird coincidence as is. And he's like, look, it's that pig that you love. Like, doesn't know still. And I'm like, that's so weird. Like, already to me, that's a weird-ass coincidence, right? Uh-huh. As is. And I'm like, send me the photo. Like, I want to get that. I eventually want to get a little Peppa, like, on my ankle or something. Okay, my tattoos are all shit anyways. It doesn't fucking matter. Days go by, and we're all, me, Ty, and Paige are on our flight back to America. And Paige and I are sitting in first class, and Ty is sitting in economy. Thank you, Sidemen. He's not a makeup artist. I'm sorry. Um... And Ty is sitting in economy and he's sitting next to this guy and Ty keeps coming up to us and he's like, I'm sitting next to this guy. He's so hot. Like, should I talk to him? Like, what should I do? He eventually starts talking to the guy and the guy is like an editor for Love Island. And so they're talking about that on reality television. They get to know each other super. And then like four hours go by in the fight and I'm like about to fall asleep and I come up and Ty comes up, taps my shoulder to like wake me. And he's like, Tana, you will never, ever believe this. And I'm like, what? Is it the guy? He turns to show me a photo of the guy. And on this guy's ankle, he has the exact tattoo of Peppa Pig that the girl on French oh, Man's timeline had. Wait, what the fuck? The, so like, how many people have Peppa Pig tattoos? How many people have Peppa Pig tattoos? Probably two. Let alone, <laughs> there are different types of Peppa tattoos you could get. It is the exact same tattoo yeah the, the person and he has it for his daughters like he's a normal person this man like oh. next to ty like whatever what are the odds ty is sitting directly next to someone on a flight on more than different cities like yeah that's scary i would start to get scared like i cried like like it would feel like somebody's like playing a trick on me i cried i literally cried then maybe you something me- really good's about to happen to you i hope so I think it's the universe telling me to be on the right healthy path and not fall off of it is what I've I hope gotten, that's what they're telling me. what I've gotten to but you and me come home to play in the cancel tour and we are like we we're just super inspired by Hannah Burner and everything she does like great friend we love her but we're also watching her stuff we're calling her we want to call her we want to ask like, her pick for up advice now we need help pick up whatever we're we trying. finally and Hannah Burner is just a big topic of conversation and like how we want our crowd work at our shows to go we get to New York City to shoot our episode of Cancelled Podcast. We book a random studio off of Peer Space. We book a random, there are hundreds of thousands of podcast in studios. In the biggest city in the world. In the biggest fucking city. We walk up the stairs. And it's Hannah Burner's podcast studio. It literally it's, says Giggly Squad. It's Hannah Burner's podcast studio. Such a weird, that's what, so She's crazy. not there. They, they just rent it out in the, in the meantime. Yeah, that's I weird. Don't I don't know. I'm going to start looking for shit like that in my... Like, I feel like I'm almost so, like, oblivious to everything that's going on all the time that I'm, like... I don't, maybe I don't just, notice those things. They're just so undeniable. Like, the Peppa one was, like, what the actual fuck? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that's crazy. Maggie Rogers, too. Like, I'm all the way in Paris playing that. It's just, like, all these, like, 
weird the david thing like i don't know it just all of them are so weird to me I have, I have like a million more that have happened recently but like wow i just i don't know i i would love to hear the viewers take on synchronicity and what they think that means and it's totally unrelated but i don't know why this reminded me of it because you've been talking about spirituality i want to have a pet psychic come and analyze <gasps> you this was your idea but analyze murphy's behavior <laughs> because sometimes she's a little odd. i mean nothing's wrong with her but i Brooke just want to know what she's thinking so emotionally in tune to her cat it actually cracks me the fuck up no i like, can really tell like if she's having an off day like I think we need to have a pet. I love that Theo Vaughn does that, like has like coroners on and shit. I know he did that today. God, I love him. Sincerely, we should we should have some fun guests on cancel. Speaking of fun guests, our next guest is the one and only Trisha Paytas. <gasps> is that and what's tomorrow? No, the next day. The, I'm doing her podcast tomorrow and then she's coming on cancel the next day. Oh my God, I'm so excited I, I get to be on this one. Last, am, time, last Trisha episode I wasn't on. That is That did happen. I think you were busy though. I wasn't so busy. I, really? Yeah. In what world would I ever want Hunter you, uh, Trisha Paytas I didn't know over. either maybe the mental health of it all at the time no I think you were it was just like I think it would have been overwhelming to many people yeah. and if it was like between the two it made more sense for it to be Hunter I am so excited to interview Trisha Paytas and yeah I'm happy oh my god should we wear like I feel like we should like wear like Trisha appropriate outfits like you should be a KFC FC worker and I'll be like a Burger King worker I think it'd be really funny I feel like she would really think we committed to the craft we're doing it we're absolutely fucking doing it. Perfect. Um, I'm really happy to be back on this couch with you. And obviously we are here for the next two weeks and then we go back on the road. Um, we're trying the green juice cleanse version of this tour and we'll see which one resonates with the audience more. Me and the word resonate, I know, just needs to stop. But Any day now. Um, we are so excited and hopefully no injuries this time and hopefully no drama from this week's episode. Bryce, you're a great mutual. <laughs> Stan Addison Ray. Thank you for watching this episode of Cancelled.